Okay, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Tom Avey. Uh, I will be the moderator uh, this afternoon for our veterans um, panel uh, discussion. We've got uh, three outstanding veterans from uh, the University of Utah uh, that will be speaking with this afternoon. Uh, first, a little bit about myself. I am a retired uh, Marine officer. Uh, I know I don't uh, uh, look like it, but I'm uh, preparing for my next venture in life as a Santa Claus. Uh, I currently uh, work for the MITRE Corporation, uh, supporting the Department of Defense. Uh, I've also supported the Department of Justice. Um, served 20 years in the, in, the, in the Marine Corps, started off as a, uh, an infantryman. Uh, uh, and uh, when I was, uh, uh, after about four years in the uh, infantry, I was accepted for the Marine Enlisted Commissioning Education Program, which is what brought me to the University of Utah. And um, that, um, um, I spent uh, four years uh, at the U and um, graduated with a bachelor's in industrial engineering and received my commission and became a, an IT uh, comm officer. Um, so that's what um, that's my connection to the university. Um, I'd like to uh, have each of the vets go ahead and uh, introduce themselves. Um, Jennifer, um, why don't you start off and just tell everyone a little bit about yourselves. Hi, my name is Jennifer Harkin. Um, I did six and a half years in the United States Coast Guard. Um, I got to be stationed on both coasts, Maine and Virginia and Washington, Oregon area. Um, I was a damage controlman, second class, and primarily specialized in aircraft rescue firefighting. Um, I decided to get out of the Coast Guard and pursue more emergency management and stumbled on a little known career path at the U um, called Enhanced EMS, which is through the Health and Kinesiology Department. And hopefully I will be graduating here at the end of summer. Okay, great. Uh, Justin, go ahead. Uh, hello, as Tom said, my name is Justin. I spent five years in the Marine Corps. I worked with uh, telecommunications and repairing. I worked on uh, did certain card repair. Uh, most of my time was in Southern California, and I did do a stint in Afghanistan as well. Uh, what brought me to the U was just the out, to be honest, interest in the outdoors. And then I am now a geophysics major. I graduate after this semester and I'm looking to continue on to graduate school. Okay, great. And uh, Calvin. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Calvin. I served in the Marine Corps for five years, just like Justin. I was stationed in Southern California and in Hawaii. My MOS was a UAV operator and I found out about the U because I used to live in Utah before and I heard it was the best research school. And currently I'm a pre-MOS major and I'm hoping to get into my program next year. Okay, great, thank you. Um, so um, I'm gonna, I'm going to just talk a little bit about um, my experience at the U, uh, and then um, I'm going to turn it over to the vets and and and, um, and have them discuss a little bit uh, about themselves. So when I went to the uni uh, university, I was actually on active duty. Uh, I was a sergeant, um, ended up uh, getting promoted to uh, staff sergeant while I was there. Um, and um, so unlike uh, a lot of the veterans um, that are um, that are here, I mean, I'm still on active duty, so obviously I had the pay and benefits uh, available to me in that. Um, also had my uh, VA benefits. Um, still expensive for um, uh, en enlisted Marine to, to go to the U, even, even at that time uh, with uh, you know, full pay and whatnot. But um, I was assigned to the, uh, the Navy ROTC unit. Administratively, we, we were uh, attached to the reserve, local reserve unit. But we had um, duties that we had to, uh, that, were, that we were involved in with uh, with the uh, the Navy ROTC unit uh, while we were there. Uh, but basically, it was um, go to classes and um, and 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 then attend to the duties that we had in the Navy ROTC unit. Um, I'd like I'd like you all to go ahead and t um, talk now a little bit about what what's it like being a vet at the uh, at the U. Um, and um, I'll, I'll just open up to whoever would like to talk first. Uh, I'll go first. So I transferred here in spring semester and 
before here, I came to uh, the University of Hawaii and we had a great vet program over here, but we also have an even greater program over here at the U and I've been really thankful for all the resources and everything that's just available to me here. And I, I feel like I can really accomplish my goal as a student over here. So you want to expand a little bit about, I mean, the resources that you're talking about that are available? Right. So we, here at the Vet Center, there's also a, one thing we didn't have at the University of Hawaii was uh, part of the registrar's office being attached to here. Uh, we, they go under Vet Services and um, their program is very streamlined and I don't have to constantly keep asking the same questions over and over again and they always have the right answer and they also unlike uh, my previous university I'm able to get my educational benefits quicker this way through a more streamlined process great Justin or Jen uh yeah I was going to go into not so much the using our benefits, but the actual like day-to-day -day life here at the U is I know one of the big things is that stands out is as a veteran, you're an older student. And so your priorities are definitely very different than some of the uh, younger students that you're interacting with. And you sometimes get that like disconnect because they're looking like more for having a good time, making new friends and like really starting that life initially out of high school into like their own lives and figuring themselves out. Whereas I feel a lot of us veterans are older and are just in a different stage in life. I know I'm like, oftentimes like, oh, I don't really want to hang out. I'm going to go home and take care of my dog and hang out with my partner and we're going to do our thing. I kind of have like a busy life schedule. I have work on top of going to classes and everything. Because like you mentioned, I uh, that stipend sometimes doesn't cover everything you need to cover and right. so you're in just in a very different mentality right in joining as an older as an old just as an older person or a, even more specifically as a veteran and uh, as calvin mentioned there's the veteran support center that is a place that you can go to and there's a lot more people who have that older mentality or like that just different mentality than the younger college students which has been very key for me to actually like have a group to interact with that you feel like you fit in and have some camaraderie with versus sometimes hanging out with a uh, 18 year olds when you're almost 10 years older is just weird and awkward and you're just in a different place in life <laughs> sure and, and i and i i was in the same position when i was here i was i was uh i was an older um i was an older student when i was here and then uh, i understand that i was hanging i'm hanging out with the uh the midshipman from the Navy or ROTC, sometimes it's a, it was a little, little it seemed, it seemed a little awkward. You know, we, we've got that, it's not much of a, a, an age gap, but uh, enough that uh, makes a difference. Uh, one of the demographics I'll point out to the audience is that two thirds of the veterans that are, are at the U uh, are in the age uh, group of 26 to 40 years old. And we currently have uh, uh, almost 1300 vets or servicemen at the U and that's not including uh, ROTC. Uh, Jen, um, do you have anything that you'd like to add for that to that? Absolutely. I would uh, like to double down on kind of what Justin said, uh, coming out of the military and then going to a four-year university for the first time for me. Um, I know a lot of people when they go to university, uh, they're there to party, they're there to go out and do things like that. And having the Veterans Center there on campus to be able to go in Obviously, things are a little different right now with the pandemic, um, but last year, being able to just go and sit around with people kind of my same age of a similar experience and mindset um, and have a cup of coffee and talk about school and classes and things like that. Um, also, the textbook rental or borrowing that they have, the library there, um, that's really awesome. Uh, they're always bending over backwards to get us a lot of cool stuff, get us into football games, um, get us jackets or coffee mugs or things like that just to make us feel welcome. And then to expand kind of on what Calvin said, having the registration people there 
right there to just be like, hey, I've got a quick question about why my payment looks like this when last time it looked like that. Um, that just really streamlines everything and makes it so much easier to be a vet at the U where it'd be more difficult in other places. Right. I'm, I'm glad you all brought up the Veterans Support Center. Uh, so Paul Morgan uh, is, um, is the director there and a very good friend of mine. We actually were here at the, uh, at, uh, going to school at the U together uh, on the same program. And uh, now he's back at the U uh, helping vets uh, couldn't, couldn't um, have a, a, a better individual uh, being the director there. Um, and uh, I, as Paul talked to me about uh, what the uh, Veterans Support Center was all about, I thought that was, I mean, just an outstanding program, something that uh, would have been great uh, to have, I know for us uh, when we were there uh, on campus. Um, and I, I know it provides uh, a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of support uh, to you all. Um, I, what I, I, I'd like to ask you a question about um, kind of how, how um, uh, the other students, the interaction with other students is, um, you know, when I, when I attended, um, it was uh, early 80s, so not long after the Vietnam War, and you know, that was kind of a, um, a, uh, a blemish um, uh, on, um, uh, on the country for, um, by a lot of people, and, and so vets weren't uh, treated very well. And uh, so a lot of times, you know, you, you, you kind of got that, um, that um, um, people looked at you a little funny when, you, when they saw you on campus. We used to have to wear our uniforms uh, to class uh, once a week when we had uh, the uh, NRTC uh, lab on Thursdays. And so people just kind of gave you the you know, kind of the stink guy. Um, so what have you all um, how, how have you all found um, your interaction with uh, with other students when they find out that you're a, you're a vet? Uh, I feel like something that kind of, like uh, you again, like we don't have to wear uniforms because we are currently out right. on like uh, your experience. So it's like we don't stand out as much, I feel. But it's oftentimes that uh, depending on the person you're interacting with like you sometimes get like that old like oh thank you so much for serving and like that really like pleasant experience of they want to ask questions or know mo more about what's going on or like what you do or like it's oftentimes goes in that like oh did you go overseas is like a really common question and then there has been a couple times where I've gotten the kind of like oh so you're a cold-blooded killer and it's just like whoa now calm down like I, I Sort of the military but like that's not my mentality and it's interesting getting some people to like instantly jump into that like almost like call of duty mentality which is like a video game where you run around shooting each other and they're just like oh that's what the military is like and that kind of lack of awareness of the diversity that actually is within the military right Anyone else? I, primarily, primarily for me, when people find out um, I was in the military, you know, they, the initial reaction is like, oh man, how old are you? Because um, <laughs> <laughs> obviously that just means I must be like light years older than them, um, which kind of been. Uh, and then the, the follow-up question I get is pretty standard. It's like Coast Guard. Is that even a part of the military? What? <laughs> What even does the Coast Guard do? Um, so I definitely don't get looked at under the same lens as anybody in maybe the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine Corps um, might get. A lot of times people say five branches, right? Space Force. Um, and so I don't really experience in that, but I get a lot of people just asking questions about what it's like, what's the day-to-day, -day, things like that. Um, overall, pretty enjoyable experience. Right. Yeah, I tell, I tell you, Jen, I, um, I took a, uh, a trip up uh, along the, uh, uh, the Pacific Northwest uh, coast one time. Um, and uh, every time I came into a little town where I saw a Coast Guard station, I mean, there were times like, yeah, I could have I joined the Coast Guard. <laughs> I could have been happy here. <laughs> Calvin, do you have anything you'd like to add? Oh, uh, yeah. Similar to uh, Justin. Whenever I've had to tell people that I was a Marine, people often ask me like things like, 
where did I go overseas or, you know, how many people I've killed. And also I've realized that recently people sometimes ask me like what my uh, political affiliation is because they seem to be under this impression that most of us are a certain political affiliation. Right, right. And, I, and I'll have to say that I think um, that's probably changed over the years. I think when I was in, there, um, people were more, probably more conservative. And now it's probably more evenly spread. Um, and, uh, but maybe the external view, viewpoint uh, from others is maybe uh, has, has not necessarily changed. Um, so there, um, we, 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 we often see, um, things in the paper about, um, you know, veterans being misunderstood and, um, and then sometimes, uh, some of the, some of the issues that veterans, veterans have, um, I know that veterans in general are, uh, one and a half times more likely, uh, to commit suicide than non-veterans, um, I know it's a major issue in communities. Um, and um, so I, I know there's a, uh, a mentoring program through the uh, uh, support center uh, to uh, help vets, uh, vets uh, that's uh, partnered with the VA. Um, uh, Calvin, I, I think you're a, you're a mentor, a uh, peer mentor, aren't you? Uh, yes, I am, sir. C can you talk a little bit about that and what, uh, what you do and, and uh, how you got involved in that? Uh, so I, I volunteered to be a peer mentor and the reason why I wanted to was because I wanted to help other vets that were in, uh, like me that had just transitioned over here from a military lifestyle to a normal lifestyle. And they, sometimes they need some assistance or sometimes they don't know, you know, what resources are available to them. And I would just like to be able to help them. So some of my roles includes helping them define what kind of resources are available to them. And this can go from uh, suggestions about um, where, can, where can they find educational benefit assistance or what kind of grants are available to them or what kind of resources are there for them, whether it's from medical to dental and maybe even sometimes um, uh, other personal things too. Okay. Um, what, um, now I know the, I know the Veterans Support Center, um, has, um, provided, um, um, uh, provides, um, veterans some, some scholarships. Um, uh, Paul and I were talking about this earlier, uh, and I know they, they receive, uh, money from, uh, the Alumni Association, uh, and they're able to pass out uh, enough scholarship or not enough scholarship. They're able to pass out scholarships. Um, uh, what are what are in addition to those? What are what are some of the other um, um, uh, financial um, financial opportunities or uh, backing that uh, are available to uh, you, you, uh, you vets um, other than the VA benefits? And and do those do those cut? Does that cover everything, or um, what do you find that you're uh, lacking on that? Well, well, I know for many of us, one of those options is just getting a job, and we have the benefit of having a at least a little bit of a resume to back up get, getting work and everything. So I know a lot of vets do work on top of going to classes just to kind of, again, if they have car payments or like in debt or paying for um, like a house and things of that nature, because sometimes being a little older, you're trying to take on a little bit more financial responsibility as well and have more of the... Uh, capacity for that so i know they're just getting a job in general uh i know i have gotten also the um uh i am also a work study at the uh, veteran support center which it's a um pretty much only available to veterans or people who are using some sort of benefit from the va and with that it's pretty much you get an uh, opportunity to work at the vet center uh this year it's a little bit different i think uh Calvin's actually on duty right now, or it looks like he's in the desk on duty. And you kind of just, again, are a liaison for veterans who come in 
and can guide them within like either answer some of their questions they have as they come in or to guide them to the right place to get them the help that they need for their educational benefits. And on top of the scholarships that are offered from the uh, Veteran Support Center, uh, I know there's the uh, student veterans at the U who also run a five, like in the past we've run a 5K to try and earn some revenue as well. And then they use that for uh, scholarships as well. And that's just another really local way that we're trying to support veterans here at the U is through programs and trying to make more scholarship opportunities and everything. Yeah, yeah I, I know that um, uh, the uh, Veteran Support Center uh, uh, received um, um, enough scholarships for uh, about 15 scholarships uh, ranging from a thousand to three thousand dollars last year. Um, and I know the Alumni Association just um, uh, this week uh, has, has said that they're going to uh, they're going to double that amount and uh, to uh, provide the uh, the support center even uh, even uh, more money, allow them to provide even more scholarships. So I think that's great. Um, it obviously doesn't um, uh, doesn't cover everything. Um, and I, I know they're uh, always looking for uh, more donations and hopefully, uh, you know, that um, this um, the, the Veteran Support Center and the need by uh, by the veterans at the U will uh, get highlighted by events like this that, uh, um, you know, more of those opportunities will be uh, made available. Um, what would what would you say um, has helped you um, being a vet um, kind of um, uh, has helped you in, uh, in, in being a student at the U, you know, more so than um, you know, some of your contemporaries are there, um, the, the other, other students that are non-vets. Um, can, you, can you talk about how your vet ser veteran services um, has uh, helped you uh, um, in, getting, in, in getting through uh, being a student? I'll take a shot at that one. Um, I think one of the things that comes with being a vet is uh, just that maturity. Um, that comes along with it. This isn't your first time away from home. Um, you should know how to do laundry, cook for yourself, things like that. Um, and then the other thing I would say about it is a mindset. Um, I was at about the U for six months and I was kind of dreading going to this one class. Um, and somebody said, oh, well then just skip it. And it was kind of like a little lightning bolt. It was like, skip a class. I guess I, my mindset was that that wasn't even possible. Um, I went to class, but it's, my mindset is more that this is my job now is I go to school and I just carry that, that same work ethic that I had in the military right across to doing my homework, skipping assignment. That's unheard of, you know, right. so right. it's just not right. something that's even on my radar. Yeah. How many times, how many times have you made an excuse that you couldn't get an assignment in on time? <laughs> not once. Right. Exactly. Uh, Calvin uh, or Justin? Yeah, I was going to go on and add to that. Is uh, I know being in the military, there's like the big thing on com camaraderie and working together. And one of the, like when I was early on in my um, getting my bachelor's, I was able to come to the Veteran Support Center and there'd always be people there that you could talk with and kind of work on stuff. And that community also, I think, was like, really really useful and that sometimes like i go in there and i could get help with a math homework because there'd be someone who'd already taken the class and or even when it came to dealing with my benefits and getting those benefits is a huge help too but then being able to switch to programs that are catered and work best for you uh was also a great thing of being able to go to the veteran support center and i think veterans having the resource of the veteran support center and really being able to go there for all the help and needs that they have, whether it be helping classes or help with your benefits. And even like with career stuff, I know they have like the career coach that like can help you write essays and help with your resume. And there's just so many resources that we're able to go to the veteran support center and get help with. I think that's one of the biggest advantages I've had from being a vet and going to the center and being able to use all of those resources that are provided at the veteran support center and then having a community there 
that's really able to help us out. Okay. Calvin, did you have something? Uh, yes. Um, just kind of like building up on what Jen and Justin have already uh, said, you know, there is just like a, you know, a mature mentality when it comes to taking your classes, completing your assignments. And I owe a lot of my uh, calm composure to uh, <laughs> the resources that are available to me because I don't feel, uh, I don't feel like I have to worry so much necessarily financially because I, I do have some benefits that are available to me, you know, and I know that there are plenty of people that I can talk to and, you know, we have a great career coach and we can build up on our resumes, you know, we can essentially make ourselves continuously better. Yeah, um, 60% uh, of the vets um, don't have GI Bill uh, available to them. And so uh, that is a challenge for them. So like we said before, those scholarships are uh, important to those uh, uh, those veterans. Um, and it's when, when, when they award those scholarships, it's not based on whether they have GI Bill or not, or whether um, it, um, they're, it's based on leadership and volunteerism and, and persistence in, in what they're doing. And um, so um, it's, a, it's great that the, the um, Veteran Support Center um, ha, uh, is able to provide those, um, those opportunities for vets. Um, what, what else can the alumni uh, from the university do to help you vets? I know there's already the scholarships and that's already a great help and like an awesome place for like as we're in school. But I know as I'm starting to make the transition into finishing and entering the career field, I know one of the things that would be really useful is to be able to have some sort of, uh, what's it called? A, um, like almost like job fair type thing where you could meet with some of the alumni and talk to them about some of the opportunities that they've had in the future or even just like kind of work on some of that, getting to know them and how, what their process was after getting out of uh, school as well. That's excellent, yes. Yeah, I agree. Jen or Calvin, do you have any, any suggestions? Honestly, I think they're doing a pretty great job. Uh, the Veterans Service Center is fantastic and any expansion in that would be great. Um, but I think it's amazing that we do have what we do. Okay. I can also add to what Jen said is I know um, oftentimes the uh, computer situation at the um, Veterans Support Center, oftentimes the computers are all full and that's like oh. one of those things that like that's like one of those few things that like, oh, that's kind of limited and not everyone has their own computer. And it's just, uh, or sometimes it's hard to print from your own computer and you have to jump on this like university computers. And I think uh, one of the things that they're really trying to build up or develop within the Veterans Support Center is more of those resources because we have such a large community that's actually coming into the Veterans Support Center. Right. Um, so we, we received a, a, a question um, out from the audience. Um, what can uh, the offices or staff at the U outside of the Veterans Support Center do better uh, to support uh, student veterans? The only thing I can think of off the top of my head is when the pandemic started hitting down and all of our classes started going online, um, people started changing the designation codes for their classes uh, to change them to online only classes. Um, and that affects the way we get funding or it did before uh, they came out with an addendum to that. Um, so the only thing I can really think of is just before you make those changes that may seem it's insignificant to 99.9% .9 of your student population, um, maybe run it past a vet in how kind of our funding focuses on things. If you're creating a program 
and you want your students to be able to take all four of the classes, um, but you specify that only two are mandatory, just recognize that uh, they're only gonna get two of those classes covered if that's the wording you choose to create your program with. Right, right. Uh, yeah, I think uh, another thing is uh, sometimes I've had other offices actually call and kind of ask what we're like, oh, ask about questions about what the veteran support is doing or what's available there. And sometimes I feel some of the other offices don't know all of the services that the vet center can provide. And sometimes they don't know to send veterans to the vet office to work on some right. of this stuff because it's like it's pretty expansive what they actually can take care of and help out with the veteran support center and sometimes it is nice for a vet who's like that in that specific category to be able to have a one-stop shop to take care of all of their needs rather than because it's confusing and not all set in stone for what they're planning to do Sure. With the vet center, a lot of times, like you have to jump from one place to another place and go back to the first place. And a lot of people don't deal with this on a day to day basis. They don't know what's happening. So it's like knowing all the resources, like knowing a bit more of the resources that the vet center can have and knowing that oftentimes you can just send a veteran to the veteran sports center and deal with a lot of their issues all in one place. Right. And and vets, vets tend to be pretty self reliant, right? Um, they're, they're pretty reluctant to ask for help a lot of times. Right. Um, and, um, and so, or they feel like, you know, if I, if I sign up for this, uh, scholarship, I might be taken away from somebody else who might, you know, someone else that might need it more than I do. Um, so I would say probably, um, other offices that can, can help to steer vets into, into utilizing those services probably, um, would, uh, would probably help as well. Uh, would you Would you all agree to that? Okay. Oh uh, yeah, I was, I was gonna say yeah, I would definitely agree with that. And even when it comes to uh, scholarships, especially, is uh, a lot of times vets will be like, oh, I don't necessarily want to sign up for the scholarship myself because I think someone else will need it. But uh, I think even having a conversation with like other people within the community of being like, oh, you're a veteran. That makes you deserving of these scholarships and these opportunities. You should take advantage of it. Because a lot of times they have a mentality of like, oh, other people or other veterans are going to need it more versus kind of that self-awareness of, oh, I am a veteran. I did do service. And these services are made for me. Right. Right. Um so you might uh, have noticed that um, Calvin has left us. He had to, uh, has an exam to go to, um, so he's uh, had had to take off. Um, so uh, Calvin, thanks for uh, thanks for joining us. Um, let's see, um, I'm looking to see if we've got any other questions that have come in from the audience. <laughs> Jen, I've got a question here. It says, have you ever been on the football field? <laughs> uh, I got to go down last uh, fall for the first time and wave the Coast Guard flag while they presented the uh, Veterans Award that they do out there. And then I got to help pull out uh, that giant American flag. And that was a tremendous experience uh, to come from such a small branch like the Coast Guard um, and be up there on an equal stage as everybody else. So that is something I can attribute directly to the Veterans Service Center for being able to give me. Great. Yes, uh, Paul, Paul invited me come, to come out two years ago for Vet Week. And uh, so I was out there on the field waving, waving the giant uh, uh, American flag as well. And uh, that was uh, just a great experience. I, I have to agree. Uh, I would like to add just saying that Paul has done amazing things when it comes to like vet week and it's like become like a whole week-long wild ordeal they have like meet a vet lunches and like you said going to the football field and a lot of stuff going on and that's really something that i think adds to that pretty welcoming community we have between 
the veterans and the, everyone else is just Paul has put a lot of work into like making us a uh, just part of the community within the university as well. Even though we're a different part, add to the diversity of the community, it's just making us also part of that college community as well. Right. Um, Justin, why did, why did you uh, um, choose the Marine Corps to join? Uh, to be honest, joining the Marine Corps was completely at random. It's one of those, I actually, <laughs> originally, I didn't know much about the military before I joined. I actually know close to nothing. And I had applied for college and had been accepted out of high school. And I got the price tag for going to college. And I knew that was not the good, a good option for me at the time. And so I needed to figure out a way to pay for school. And I actually got a call from a Marine Corps recruiter. And he, I was still 17 at the time when I got the call. And he's just like, oh, well, yeah, we can pay for school. And I'm like, deal, I'm in. And I didn't even really realize that there was multiple branches. I'm like, oh, it's the army. We're joining the military. It's all one thing, right? And right. quickly <laughs> after I learned, it was not all the same thing. <laughs> right. As soon as you got on the yellow footprints, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Jen, why did you join the Coast Guard? Um, I guess I went in the complete opposite direction of Justin. Uh, I talked to everybody. I went to the Air Force recruiter. I went to the Army recruiter. I went to the Marine Corps recruiter. Um, I went to the Coast Guard recruiter, and the door was locked. And I was like, that's weird. So I knocked on the door, and like a couple minutes later, somebody came, like, creaked open the door. I was like, do you have an appointment? And I was like, no, I just wanted to talk about joining the Coast Guard. And they're like, oh, well, we only take people on appointment. And I like shut the door back in my face and I was like, okay, things were done a little different here than any of the other branches. Um, and if anything, that kind of like pushed me to learn more about the Coast Guard. And as soon as I found out that the Coast Guard had desegregated by gender, every single one of their positions in like the eighties, I was in, I was like, they're doing things different. They don't care who you are, as long as you can meet the qualifications. And I really liked the idea of just being able to help people Right. Yeah, pro probably what helped he helped the most there probably was the fact that the Coast Guard what didn't fall under Department of Defense, right? It was Department uh, Department of Transportation. So, uh, yeah, that probably uh, helped them uh, push that envelope uh, a little bit uh, quicker than the other services. Absolutely. It wasn't until 2001 that they uh, transferred over the Department of Homeland Security. Right, so. right, right. Um, let me ask, what, what's been your biggest challenge at the U? I'd say one of the biggest challenges or experiences that I've had is I know coming from a military background and just being a little bit older, you tend to be a little bit less of uh, or willing to be pushed over. And I've had definitely had issues with uh, teachers and professors who kind of feel that they're at a, it's been interesting is like kind of feeling like, oh, I'm above this. I mainly do research. This is just my kind of, I have to teach, so I'll do it kind of mentality is I've had a lot of experiences with that. And a lot, I know a lot of students will just like be like, okay, cool. I'll just let it happen. I'll just teach. And I will oftentimes retaliate a little bit and just kind of like be like, hey, you're not doing your job. You need to be doing your job. Why aren't you actually doing it? And like, kind of like be a bit more outspoken about things like that. And it's ask. yeah. And it's definitely put, not necessarily put me in a bad place, but like has put me where I've had to put a lot of effort into also kind of making sure teachers are doing their job on top of hope when I should just be attending classes and then, dealing with my education, but like kind of like getting more involved in that kind of stuff. And that's definitely been an interesting challenge or like way that I've stepped in as being a veteran here at the University of Utah as a student. Right. Jen? Um, I haven't really had too terribly many challenges, but I would say um, I hold all of my instructors again to that kind of standard that I expect out of them. And I don't know if they always expect to get that kind of feedback. I'm like you're here to do, you're here to teach. I want you to teach the class. 
So I don't know if they always expect that. Right. <laughs> um, question from YouTube. Um, what do you wish civilian peers understood about your experience? I'll jump on that one real quick. Uh, we don't all fight wars. <laughs> Uh, we don't always uh, end up overseas. Um, it's not like what you see in the movies. Um, for the most part, a lot of times being in the military is like being in a, working a job that just has really high standards um, for professionalism and grooming. Uh, but you go to work and then you go home at the end of the day. And I think a lot of people see movies and they think that is an accurate representation of what it's like. Uh -huh. Yeah, to add on that, I think it's only like, it's a really small percentage, like sub 10% of military who's actually running around shooting at stuff. The rest of the military is supporting that aspect. The warfighter, yep. Mm -hmm. And so it's one of those, I think it's good to know that the military really isn't that small idea that you have. It's a pretty diverse group and you get a lot of different people who are in the military a lot of different backgrounds, a lot of different experiences that aren't just that, like, I'm conservative, I want to shoot guns, uh, kind of mentality that I feel like people stereotype with the military, but there's people who, like, work on intelligence and, like, their job is knowing different languages, and there's people right. like me who work with technology, and I did circuit card repair most of the time I was in, and then I think Jen mentioned she's doing more of a medical health and things of that nature. And it's just a really broad, diverse spectrum of people who are joining. And even when they come out, there's still that broad, diverse spectrum of people that are in the military. Sure, sure. Yeah, even um, even when I when I came to the U as, as, as an infantryman, uh, one of my um, um, secondary MOSs was a water safety survival instructor, uh, which, ended up helping me get a job with the PE department teaching life-saving and swimming classes. Uh, so, and, I mean, that was just, you know, uh, a, a regular job, I mean, equivalent to a water um, safety instructor that uh, the Red Cross um, puts out. Um, what do you think um, uh, students who are veterans might need to keep in mind about civilian life to get the most from the U? What could you tell them? Uh, I think one of the biggest things is that when you're working with civilians or like things that you need to know is that it's not the military and that like Jen was saying, like you can have that mentality of like, I'm going to skip class or do things of that nature. And sometimes you get people who are really of that mentality, especially if they're younger and they're not necessarily here for an education, but they're more here for fun. You kind of have to have that awareness of, okay, these are the people that I'm working with maybe I will have to do my part and realize that you can't force them to do their part. You have to work with them and be on their level of kind of that different mentality and realize that it's okay that they're in that mentality. Uh, you just have to make sure you're getting that work done and then be a bit more willing or flexible on working with them as well because they right. have to work with you and like we have our issues as well. Right. Yeah. Paul says it's um, it's okay to walk on the grass um, when, once we get to the U. Uh, it's okay to challenge the professors, as Jen said. Um, and and the young student in pajamas sitting beside you might be the smartest person in the classroom, right? Um, the um, I want to get back to um, we started um, talking a little bit about uh, mental health. Um, and uh, how important is uh, mental health support to um, the um, veteran student? And what are some of the things that could be done to con uh, contribute to the success of veteran student with regard to uh, mental health? You know, I think, I think a lot of times people, uh, civilians think that, uh, you know, vets are, you know, the kind of this broke, um, broken entity um, and, um, and like I said before, you know, vets are, uh, are one and a half times more likely to commit suicide 
Um, I know it's a major issue in the community. Um, and I know the Veterans Support Center is partnered with the VA to provide the peer mentors, as we talked about, uh, who are trained to work with peers and help them with, in their success at the U. Uh, a component of that program includes health and mental health screenings uh, with the intent to refer student vets to, uh, to the VA for services. Uh, I know a nationwide study in 2011 indicated that a large number of student veterans have anxiety and depression and suicidal thoughts or symptoms of PTSD. Uh, and the deployment cycle has been significantly reduced since then, but we recognize that these vets are, are um, the vets, there are still vets that need, need help. Um, anything that, um, that, that, that you guys can add to that? I think the only thing I would add is don't assume that the services aren't out there or if they are out there, they're bad services. I know there's been a lot of bad press um, trying to get help from the VA, waiting lists are crazy long. You hear in the news um, that people have just had, you know, two years to wait to get in to get an appointment. Um, and that does not seem to be the case here. Uh, the help is there, the service is there. Don't not ask for it because you assume it's going to be subpar or you assume it's going to be a giant struggle to try to get help. Right, good point. I think, again, because I'm also one of the vital mentors, which is the VA, uh, the Veterans Sports Center conjunction. Okay. And uh, a big thing that they talk about is just giving veterans that resource to talk. And I think the Veterans Support Center does a great opportunity of like, you can go to the Veterans Support Center and you can have just other people can talk about similar experiences and things of that nature. But I know that doesn't necessarily work for everyone. Some people want that experience of someone who hasn't had that and everything. And I think finding that within the community of the U and being able to talk about some of their issues or the things they're having that maybe aren't military related or things of that nature. Because I think it's the compound of having those military issues along with like your normal life issues. And I think having avenues for dealing with both sides of things is really useful for that mental health of a uh, veteran. Yeah, um, many vets um, suffer in silence. And so um, don't ignore your instinct. Uh, if you sense a vet is uh, in distress, uh, it's important that you encourage them to uh, access the services, right? Um, I, final question, what's the best thing about being a U vet? I would have to say the best thing about being a UVET is the VSC. I, when we have normal classes and we get to all go and hang out and just have that camaraderie um, and we get to go to the football games and you get to have that kind of deeper connection with your school than if you were just attending classes and going home at the end of the day. Uh, I, I honestly think that the VSC has improved my college experience probably two times as much than if I had just come here on my own. Great. Uh, I'm going to second that notion of the Veterans Support Center has been a great resource for me. Uh, it's helped me get through a lot of my classes. It's helped me with just when I want to relax in between classes and want someone to talk to. It's most importantly provided me coffee. Most of my, uh, educational career being here at the U. And I would also, again, like to give a shout out to Paul and all the work that he's put into the Veterans Support Center and all his like constant interest of wanting to improve it and making it bigger. It's his goal to eventually have a Veterans Support Center building that's on its own, standalone from everywhere else. And it's just his really high expectations and goals that he wants out of the support center that I think has really caused it to thrive as much as it has. Right, great, great. Uh, anything else that you'd like to um, pass on to the, uh, the audience uh, out on, in YouTube land uh, before, we, uh, before we sign off? I would just like to say that it's an experience like this one that we're having right now 
um, but I don't think I'd probably get it at another university. It's the chance to sit down and talk to a panel of discussions and cover these issues. Uh, and I really appreciate being invited to participate. Great. Well, yeah, I really enjoy opportunities like this and getting to get our voice out there and just adding to that diversity in the community that we're in. And hopefully we'll get some more responses in here from other people. And again, that diversity and kind of creating, being part of that system and community that's the university, which I've come to really enjoy. Okay, great. Um, I think... Um... I, I think we're done for the afternoon. Uh, Jen and Justin, I'd like to thank you for uh, joining us this afternoon and, uh, and sharing about your experiences. Uh, Paul, I, I thank you for inviting me to be the moderator today. And uh, Gabby Sanchez-Jones from the Alumni Associate, th Association, I thank you for uh, sponsoring this. And for all of you out on YouTube, uh, thank you uh, for attending today.